Hello YouTube, Vlog and Lyrics Rance here and this week is my video about the South Australian state election, the results of which ended the Labour Party's lead and rule in South Australia. Not by much though. So first off, the numbers. The current results are 24 seats for the Liberals, don't be fooled by the name, here in Australia they're the Conservatives. The Labour Party has 18 seats at the moment, with 3 seats going to Independents. The seats of Adelaide and Mawson are still in doubt, with both the electorates of Adelaide in the city and Mawson in the south on a knife edge. Turnout was 66.2%, down over 20% on the last election. So Stephen Marshall is now the Premier of South Australia. First of the funny stories. Although there was a lot of talk about Nick Xenophon, that's how you pronounce his name. Holding the balance of power, his SA Best Party didn't even get one seat in the lower house, including him, as he lost pretty badly in the seat of Hartley in the northeast of Adelaide. So, SA Best fizzled, and even with the redistribution leaving Stephen Marshall with a starting value of 27 seats, he still lost a couple, leaving him with between 24 and 26 seats, depending on the results of Adelaide and Mawson. Now, this is a result I wasn't quite expecting. I had predicted a Liberal minority government. That would have been the best case scenario considering what's been going on in the last two years in South Australia. The fact was that Labour was probably going to lose power, so I hoped that the Liberal Party would only have minority, that they'd have like 23 seats, so that their power would be checked a bit. One funny thing, less than a week out from the election, all three major parties, the Labour Party, the Liberal Party and the SA Best Party, all received reprimands from the Australian Electoral Commission over various advertising issues. The Liberal Party were reprimanded over their claims about reducing energy prices by $300 a year. That's what their policies were apparently going to do. This was revealed to be misleading, as most of those savings would come about whether the Liberal policies were in place or not. Nick Xenophon was hit with an Electoral Commission ruling over the size of his promotional material on his car. And finally, the Labour Party was also called out for misleading advertising over a claim by Alex Gallagher, one of the Labour Senators, that the Liberal Party had a secret plan to cut $557 million from South Australia's GST share. Another funny thing, the Australian Conservatives Party, a sort of far-right party that was founded by a former Liberal who thought that the party he was in wasn't far-right enough, lost about half the vote that the predecessor far-right party, Family First, had gotten in 2014, falling from 6.5% when it was Family First in 2014 to 3.1% under the Australian Conservatives in 2018. Another thing that was funny that happened when my mum and I were headed for the polling booths. My mum asked whether she should vote for the far left party, the Animal Justice Party. And the instant that I revealed that they're anti-pets, she said they can take a long walk off a short pier. And then, when my dad went to the polling booth, when the person who was handing out the How to Vote cards for the Australian Conservatives went to walk up to him, my dad kind of cringed away like, Ugh! Which I think could have probably hurt the person handing them out. Ah well. The SA Best Factor. How much did it affect the result? Well, Nick Xenophon's team got about 13.7% of the vote, but didn't get a single seat. They took a fair few from the Liberal Party and took less from Labour and the Greens. A lot of the votes. So, they could have influenced it and stopped Marshall from getting even more seats. Xenophon admitted that they'd probably spent too much time with their various, all their candidates. They'd spread themselves far too thinly. I don't know what to think about that. Um, they also had a pretty aggressive campaign waged against them by Labour, Liberals and the hotel lobby. So, my question is, what will the Liberals privatise while they're in government? Probably the battery. Uh, SA Water could be under threat as well. 
And since many of the Liberal Party are bought by the coal and oil businesses, there's a decent chance that the solar thermal plant being built in Port Augusta could be mothballed. And of course, when the next power blackout happens because we're 200% reliant on the eastern states, he will blame Labor because he blames Labor for everything. Oh well, hopefully my man Leon Bignall will get up in Mawson. I'm no longer in his electorate as Mawson has moved further south, but I still root for him to get up. 4.2%. That shouldn't be too hard. I hope he gets up. I hope both Labour candidates get up in the remaining two electorates so that um, Marshall only has 24 seats. That'd be good. So, that is my video for this week. I hope you found it interesting. Please rate, comment, share and subscribe. And have a great day, everyone.